everyone and welcome to episode number 190 of Husavik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode. It's a little bit of a catch up since the last time that you were here and we are going to set things up for the new European season which we will do the group stage of next week. As you can see on screen we've got our youth intake. We're going to do a bit of a domestic recap to show you guys the results that we have had since you last saw us in the finals of the Club World Cup. A transfer update, a squad overview an Icelandic UEFA qualifying update, and then we'll have the group stage draws for the Champions League, and also see where the other Icelandic teams do go who qualify for European competition. So if you are looking forward to today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, as you might have noticed, in that little introduction, there is no game today. There was nothing overly interesting happening around the time of the group stage draw for this season's Champions League. And we did have quite a few games when we were last here in the finals of the Club World Cup. If you did miss that episode, I'll leave a link to that one over in the top right corner. And also apologies for the lack of videos over the past few days. As I mentioned, a couple of days ago, I was busy with some new house stuff. Had to be out there while that got sorted out. And as well as that yesterday morning, had a hospital check for my eyes being diabetic. They dilate the eyes, make the pupils bigger, and it does take a little while for the eyes to recover from that. So it wasn't a great idea yesterday to sit in front of a computer screen and try and explain this stuff in front of a key light as well while my eyes were quite susceptible to the bright stuff. So apologies for that, but we're back on track now and can set things up to get stuck into the group stages of the Champions League next week. But as you can see on screen, as I mentioned earlier, we are staying off today with the youth intake here at Volsunga for 2037, as you can see yet again, it's not a very good one. A couple of free star potential options there, but on the whole, it is a pretty poor one. Still struggling to get a really, really world-class talent coming through here at the club. And if we go forward a little bit off the back of this youth intake coming through, we can show you guys the people who we are going to be signing out of this youth intake. We start off with the hottest prospect out of this year's youth intake. Apparently, he is a New Zealander, which is good to see and that is Jory Mtolo, is also part South African, one-star current ability, three-star potential. He is an attacking midfielder who will probably try and train up as a box-to-box -box midfielder, so he does become a little bit more used to playing in that central midfield role. So he apparently is the best option out of this season's youth intake. Along with that, we have Gummunda, Andre Ingus on same current ability and potential there for the young Icelandic striker, as well as that. Aron Alpha Henriksson, exactly the same as those prior two options, also Icelandic, but he is a left back, so hopefully he becomes useful in a couple of years' time as well as that. We've got Arnamar Hucknesson, he is half-star current ability, two and a half-star potential, a goalkeeper, so he hopefully can develop into that potential and hopefully exceed it by a little bit as well as that. Paul Belder Elenson, two and a half-star potential, one star current ability for another Icelandic striker and then one more New Zealander who we have signed for this season's youth intake apart Dutchman Raymond van den Steinhoven another one star current ability two and a half star potential player and he can play in the central midfield and those are the players who we have signed out of this youth intake for 2037 here at Volsunga a pretty poor one but hopefully some of these players can get a bit of game time in the first team before the save does end. But going forward to the day of the Champions League draw for this new 2037-38 season, before we have a look at the transfers that we have made and our team going into the new season, a quick update on what we have done off the back of those Club World Cup episodes at the start of this week. As you can see, we did pick up that final by a scoreline of 2-0 over Chelsea, and since then we have played Quite a bit of football, it is fair to say. Next up for us is Fram, but they are ninth in the league. But we've played a lot of football, probably most noticeably. A few rough results there against one team in particular, and that is HK. And the first of those results means that we cannot pick up the domestic quadruple this season. They knocked us out in the fourth round of the Molka Bikarin on penalties. It was actually quite a long penalty shootout, this one. But in the end, it was Jonata who missed a penalty in our rotated team, got knocked out in the fourth round of the Molka Bikarin by the team which did make the quarterfinals of the Europa League last season. One thing to note, however, the board these days do not care about our results in the Molka Bikarin, so that's not going to hurt our chances of keeping the job here at Volsunga, which is why we put out our rotated team 
for that game focusing on the league before we do get stuck in to Champions League action but still a bit of a disappointing result there we get knocked out of the Molka Bikram for the first time in a long time and that does mean that one team is going to be able to secure a European spot by winning the Molka Bikram this season but we are not on for a domestic quadruple HK got rid of us there in the Molka Bikram not too long off the back of our return from that Club World Cup but in and around that some pretty good results we have won most of our games apart from that one against HK in the cup except for away at HK in the league that was actually with a pretty close to full strength 11 for that game Cal Vollen was out injured so that's why Paul Valdson was in goal they grabbed back a pretty fluky goal there in the 88th minute did HK so they are pushing us a little bit this season RHK in terms of head-to-head -head matches but those are the only games we have not won so far this season domestically apart from that we have looked quite good and what that does mean for the league table after 15 games that we have played we are six points clear of HK and we also have two games in hand as well so are in quite a strong position to be picking up the domestic league yet again here in Iceland HK in a pretty strong position to be going back into Champions League qualifying next season. Keflavik currently in that Europa League spot, but Phil Kier and Nats KR not far behind. It does look like those five teams are the ones who are going to be representing Iceland in European football and qualifying next season. But the big news out of all of that, of course, we cannot pick up the domestic quadruple. Are going to have to settle for a domestic treble this season with HK dubbing us out of the Molka Bikram. But we have done some transfer business. And, and amongst those games not too much but one sale in particular that is notable and that transfer is the sale of Fabio Maliano he was unhappy at the club so we decided to let him go seeing as these days he was a bit of a third choice player for us in a few positions he has gone to Saint Etienne in Ligue 1 for 21.5 million pounds not too bad for a player who went at the club only had two star current ability and two and a half star potential and back when we bought him which was quite a while ago now in 2028 we only spent 2.7 million pounds on him so that is not the worst bit of business there it does mean that we do miss out on a homegrown club and nation player but we do have quite a few of those here at Volsinger these days so that shouldn't hurt us too much when it does come to squad registration for this season's Champions League but that is the most notable departure Fabio Maliano has gone to Saint Etienne apart from that getting rid of a few young fringe players who didn't have a great deal of potential a few of those going to fellow Icelandic teams like Rogby Askam and Vilhelma Sigurdsvainsson but apart from that as well quite a few loans and we did sign one player on a free transfer that I don't think I updated you guys on before we did get stuck in to the FIFA Club World Cup and that is because one we have already loaned him out and two he doesn't actually look as promising as I was hoping that is a defensive midfielder and Andreas Ott so it's been a pretty stable transfer window here in Iceland of course we do still have deadline day coming up in Europe but I think we're going to try and hang on to our players now because of course we can't add anyone to our squad the transfer window here in Iceland did finish at the end of July in terms of trying to get players to come to us here in Iceland one of the reasons that we did also sell Fabio Mariano is because at the time of deadline day in Iceland we had quite a nice big for Ali Ramadan to go to Barcelona he looked like he might be going but in the end he took too long to decide and that meant that we had to cancel a potential transfer that we would have used the Ramadan and Mariano money on so we could have potentially improved at centre back it definitely would have been an improvement we'll show you guys the player I was looking at the deal that would have been for Ali Ramadan was going to be for 42.5 million as well which would have been quite a good deal even though he was our club captain for a player we signed back in 2029 for £600,000 but the player we were going to get as a replacement was this man out of Monaco Yannick Andre of competitors attributes to Ali Ramadan he is definitely an upgrade would have cost us around about what we were going to get for Ali Ramadan so that would have been a good bit of business but unfortunately without that sale of Ali Ramadan we did have to cancel this transfer to so Ali Ramadan there not deciding to go to Barcelona quite in enough time but that was a deal that we did nearly get across the line so what that means going into this upcoming European season it's a very very similar looking Volsunga team to what you did see last season we'll just quickly load up what our team will look like for the Champions League currently we are dealing with a few injuries to some of our players as you can see Ognar Mizkic as well as Christopher Allegard we currently have a little bit of an issue at left wing we've also got players like Agatigre 
on an orange injury. But for the most part, we're going to be staying with exactly the same team that would have played in last season's Champions League final and first off in goal. We will have Carl Vollen. He has improved greatly since this time last season. Five-star current ability and potential for the 27-year-old German who these days has 53 international caps. Next up, we have Rodenko Krollo at right back. Four and a half star current ability, five star potential. Yet again, a player who has improved a lot since this time last season and isn't too far away, if not already one of the best right backs in the world. Out on the left-hand side, Jonathan Berger, who was good for us last European season. He's improved just a little bit since this time last season, but is four star current ability and potential. The former Chelsea man, out of Belgium at centre-back, we have Filippo Dinelli from Belgium as well, 25 years old. He's improved a little bit since this time last season as well. And partnering him is the man that we nearly got rid of the club captain in Ali Ramadan. He is quite similar to what he was looking like at this time last season. But both of those centre-backs are rated as four-star current ability and potential players. Going forward to the midfield, we are going to stick with Basaro Gay in the DM role. Just seems to perform a little bit better there, it does feel like, than Alain Basicki on the same star rating, but he is a very good solid DM option for us there, is Basaro Gay, and of course these days part Icelandic as well in the midfield alongside him, Lasana Dombia, we have just signed him to a new contract, that was the other thing that could have come up transfer-wise in this past window, his contract was due to expire at the end of 2038, if we did not get him onto a new contract, before January, he might have been a player that we would have looked to sell before he might have been able to leave on a free transfer. But thankfully, we have just recently got him on a new contract, albeit he's had a wage rise of around about £90,000 a week, which is a fairly hefty wage rise. But you look at the quality that he does bring to this false in the squad, and I think it's fair to say it is worthwhile keeping him around. So, quite a big contract update there. Lasana Dumbia is sticking around till the end of 2041. At the very least, he stays in the box-to-box -box role, and alongside him, a fellow Frenchman in Ben Venu Bayer with four and a half star current ability and potential, and yet another player who has improved a little bit since this time last season and forward to our front three. A few of these players, as I mentioned earlier, are currently injured. We've got Agustin Agatigare out on the right-hand side these days, four and a half star current ability and potential. He has improved greatly over the past few seasons since we also signed him off of Chelsea, albeit we got him on a free transfer, so that was definitely a great bit of business out on the left-hand side. Still, Ognar Mizkic have not been able to improve on him in that position. Hopefully, that might be something we can look to do come the next transfer window before the next European season, but he's a good solid option for us out there with three-star current ability and potential, even though he's quite similar to where he was this time last year. On that progress graph and up front it is the current Ballon d'Or holder and Adam Saki four-star current ability and potential has just regressed slightly ability-wise since this time last season, which is a little bit surprising, but is still a very, very good option for us up front here at Volsunga. And then we go over to our second 11. These are the other players who you'll probably see a bit of this upcoming Champions League season. Starting off with our backup goalkeeper in Robson. Two-star current ability, four-star potential for the Brazilian we did sign last season to replace Peter Huel Lerbeck. He's improved a fair bit since this time last season. He'll get some game time should Cal Volan get injured during this upcoming season. In defence, our backup right back is going to be Pedro Lemos. Two-and-a-half-star current ability and potential, potentially a position we could improve in, but he is homegrown club and nation and only 22 years old, so it does feel like it's worthwhile keeping hold of him, especially because he's actually done quite a good job when coming off the bench for us over the past Champions League campaign and out on the left-hand side. Our backup is Louis Herrera, three-star current ability and three-and-a-half-star potential, another homegrown club player, and he has improved just a little bit as well. Since this time last season, our backup centre-backs for this upcoming European season are going to be Richard Waswa, three-star current ability, four-star potential, another player who's improved slightly since this time last season alongside him is Gabriel Capan, two-and-a-half-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential with three-and-a-half stars of that being gold. And he has also improved quite a bit since this time last season. Alain Basicki, defensive midfielder, just a little bit of improvement since this time last season as well, does have that four-and-a-half-star potential 
which does mean in a little while we might have to give consideration to him starting over someone like Bussero Gay, but at the moment he can be a very, very good midfield backup ex Cam Bruno Costa in the more attacking positions with his four star current ability and potential. He has improved greatly since this time last season, even though he did suffer a couple of injuries in the past European season. Now, backup Mazala is homegrown club player in Nalek Voskanyan, two and a half star current ability and four star potential, even though he hasn't improved that much since this time last season. Has the 22 year old. In terms of our front three backups, we have Malizio Menga here out on the right wing, three star current ability and four star potential. He's improved greatly since he came to the club around about this time last year to replace Hans Voss as well as that. Christopher Allegar, when he is fit, three star current ability, four star potential has improved a little bit since this time last season as well, albeit that injury he currently has, probably not helping that graph out. So much in our backup striker for this upcoming season. Heiko Kunzi, three star current ability, four star potential. So quite a solid looking backup team there and quite a few players who do have room to grow as well and try and put pressure on those players who are in our first team and going down to the bench. A few players you might also see a little bit of this upcoming season. Premzel Bokek, a third choice left back and an extra option at centre back being homegrown and club and in nation and being 20 years old. We don't need to register him two star current ability and three and a half star potential, even though he has regressed since this time last season. Quite a useful extra option to have as well as that. We do have Joe Nada on the bench for this backup team as he can cover both right wing, left wing and strikers are quite a good option for us there. Up front for another homegrown club and nation player with two and a half star current ability and potential. And apart from that, the rest of these players down here apart from Patrick Nygaard, another homegrown club and nation player, probably players, the ones who aren't in our first choice team, who we might look to loan out for this upcoming season. We might keep someone potentially like Kevin Vuters as a third choice striker, really promising youngster who we did sign out of Ajax. He could be useful keeping around, as I see, if we do get an injury to one of our strikers now that Fabio Maliano is no longer at the club. But apart from that, players like Parazek, Paul Valdson, Ali Poor, we've got Mosvich, Alvarez, and Alvaro Arce, all players who, if the right offers come in for them on European deadline day, we might look to loan out and get some regular football elsewhere in Europe. But on the whole, I think that's a pretty similar looking team to what we did have going in to this previous European season. And surely we can be in there at the business end of the Champions League. Yet again, but it is time for us to do an update on what has happened in qualifying to the other Icelandic teams before we do take part in this Champions League group stage draw for this season. As you can see, yet again, we are a first pot team despite the fact this past season we did not win the Champions League, but we will start off with Champions League qualifying. And we did have Phil Kier this time, who started off in the third qualifying round on the league path side, where unfortunately they took on a decent team out of the Czech Republic in Sparta Praga team, who we did take on in the group stages last season or the year before I believe it was and they got beaten fairly handily there 3-1 in the first league nil all in the second league so Phil Kier got knocked out in their first round of Champions League qualifying but what that meant is they were already guaranteed a place in the group stages of the Europa League off the back of that so already we do have Phil Kier in the group stages of the Europa League and the same can be said for HK down in the Europa League for some reason even though they were supposed to play in a qualifying playoff they actually gained automatic group stage status there in the Europa League. So both Filke and HK are in European football this season. Both of them will be in the group stages of the Europa League. And that means there'll be a few more teams who were down in Conference League qualifying. Starting off with Valerakjevic up there near the top in the second qualifying round on the league path side. Unfortunately, they got beaten there by BK Hocken out of Sweden 2-0 in the second league off the back of a 1-0 defeat. In the first leagues, Valerakjevic got knocked out there nice and early in Conference League qualifying. And we also had Nats KR in Conference League qualifying. They started off in the fourth qualifying round, so pretty much the playoff for the Conference League. They are halfway through their tie. Actually, a very tough draw for those guys taking on Monaco out of France with Yannick Andre, among others, as you did see earlier, a player who we were looking at signing. They are 2-0 behind going into that second league, so it does look like. They are up against it there. It might just be three Icelandic teams 
in the group stages of Europe this upcoming season, which is still pretty good, especially with two of those in the Europa League, and most of those teams did get through pretty easy enough just off the back of playing in one qualifying round in the Champions League, for Phil Kerr and HK somehow got automatic group status there in that Europa League, and of course with our efforts over the past few seasons, we got automatic status into the group stage of the Champions League as well, so we'll do an update later on Nuts KR in that Conference League playoff, but things not looking good for those guys, and we'll also come back when we do do that and check in on who HK and Phil Kerr do get in the group stage draw for the Europa League, but we are about to take part in the group stage draw for the Champions League for 2037-38 reveal who we are going to be playing throughout next week. In our group pot one, it is us, Man United, the defending champions, Real Madrid, PSG, AC Milan, Hertha Berlin, Sporting out of Portugal, and the Europa League winners. In Real Sociedad, pot two, Chelsea, Manchester City, RB Leipzig, Arsenal, Juventus, Barcelona, Bayern Munich and Inter Milan, quite a strong pot two for the Champions League this season here. In game pot three, we have Sevilla, Valencia, Lille, Partizan, Ajax, Cologne, Dynamo, Kiev, and Hellas, Verona. So that's also a decent little pot, albeit at this stage of the save teams who we should be beating both home and away and down to pot for the teams who should be the easy beats. We have Galatasaray, Anderlecht, RB Salzburg, Olympiakos, Montpellier, Famalicão. Slavia, Prague, and as well as that, Morenense out of Portugal. Quite a few Portuguese teams making the group stages of the Champions League this season, but it is time to get through the first pot for the Champions League this season, and would you believe it, they've ranked the first two teams based on finishing position in the Champions League last season, Real Madrid in Group A, and we are in Group B, so now things start to get a little bit more serious as we can see who we are going to be playing in this upcoming European season. First off, Real Madrid in Group A. They get Manchester City, so that is looking like a very, very tough group already. And in Group B, we are going to get Arsenal, a team who we did beat in the quarterfinal of the Club World Cup just in our last episode and in the Super Cup a year or so ago. Could be a team who are tricky, but hopefully we can get the job done over those guys and finish on top of our group. Bayern Munich join PSG. In Group C, RB Leipzig, AC Milan. In Group D, it is Inter joining Real Sociedad. In Group E, Barcelona joining Sporting. In Group F, Hertha Berlin and Chelsea. In Group G, and that means that in Group H, it is Man United. And Juventus down to pot three. First up are Dynamo Kiev. In Group A, we are joined by Cologne out of Germany. So at the moment, we've got two teams from top five leagues in Europe. So it could be a potential little group of death this one, there's some decent players on that Cologne team, but again that should be a team at this stage of the save who we can finish above, but we might get pushed a little bit in our Champions League group this season, it is fair to say, albeit we fought that last season alongside Man City, and things ended up working out pretty well, Group C, Hellas, Verona, Group D, Valencia, Group E is Partizan, Group F is Lille. I think we'll probably get Sevilla here in Group G. No, it's going to be Ajax and Sevilla are going into Group H, which at the moment also looks like quite a even group. It is fair to say, and down to the fourth seeds in these groups, Montpellier go into Group A. We are going to get Famila Cal out of Portugal. We played fairly well against those guys a couple of seasons ago. Those could be some useful points against those guys to go towards us trying to close that gap on Portugal. On the coefficient table, Molinense go into Group C, hopefully they struggle in that group as well. Also being Portuguese, Group D, we have Olympiacos, Group E, Slavia, Prague, Group F, Galatasaray, Group G, RB, Salzburg, and that does mean that Anderlecht will go into that last group alongside Man United, Juventus, and Sevilla, so that's what the groups do look like for the Champions League this season. It's a fairly even group, I think it is fair to say, the one that we are in, but I do still think we should be finishing on top of that group based on our performances over the last five years. But as I said, it does have the potential to turn into a tricky one if we are not on top of our game with both Arsenal and Cologne. Out of top five legs, we'll go forward a few more days now. Check in on Nuts KR in that playoff against Monaco and also the Europa League draw with HK and Phil Kier. And we've gone for a day or so off the back of that group stage draw for the Champions League. First things first, Nuts KR as we expected did not make their way past Monaco. They also got beaten there quite heavily in that second league 3-0 slow go out 5-0 there 
on aggregate. So in the end, as I mentioned earlier, quite a tough draw there for Nuts KR. And that means that we just have teams this season in the Champions League, us, and in the Europa League with both HK and Phil Kier. But now we can go up and check in on what groups both of those teams did get in that draw for the Europa League group stage. And first off, we have the group which HK have found themselves in. That is Group C. It does look like quite a tough group for those guys, of course, last season. As mentioned earlier, they did make the quarterfinals of the Europa League. This time, I think things might be a little bit tougher for those guys because they have got Liverpool out of England, as well as the team that we did sell Fabio Maliano to in Saint Etienne out of France. So if I had to put money on it, I think HK might be finishing third in this group this season and making knockouts of the Conference League, which truth be told, might be a little bit of a winnable competition for those guys if they do take it seriously. And it is FK Colabora who make up this group out of Serbia. HK should definitely be finishing above those guys. They might potentially find a way to sneak their way through in second spot out of this group. I think it does look like third is the most likely option for HK in this Europa League group this season. Meanwhile, Phil Kier have found themselves in Group E, also a little bit of a tough looking group for these guys. They will have Napoli as the first seeds in their group, certainly the team it looks on paper who should be topping this one as well as that. We have SV Lead out of Austria. That might be a team that Nats KR are capable of beating. And it was also Red Star from Serbia who will be in their group. Potentially, Phil Kier might be able to sneak their way into third in this group as well. But I think it might be a little bit more tougher for those guys than it would be for HK off the back of what HK did do in this competition last season. We'll go over now and have a look at all the groups in case you are interested. And these are what the remaining groups do look like for the Europa League this season. There are groups A through to D. And we'll go down a little bit more. And editing Sean can pop this a little bit further above my head to show you guys the bottom half of the draw with groups E through H in particular. Groups F through H, of course, with Phil Kier being in group E. But I think that does things to set things up for this upcoming European season. We'll just quickly, before we do round off today's episode, go and have a look at the coefficient table going into this upcoming European season. Of course, we would have earned a few points early doors on this going into this upcoming season, but not too many. We are only on a 0.9 currently for this current season. Portugal already getting a bit of a match on us there. It is fair to say with a 3.75. And as well as that, we are getting rid of a stronger year than Portugal as well. So this could be a year where Portugal do extend the gap on us, but hopefully we can go deep in the Champions League HK or Phil Kier can have a decent run in one of the Europa League or the Conference League knockouts and we can try and match what we are getting rid of and try and hold on to that seventh spot, which we should do, but try and make sure that other teams in behind us don't close the gap and that we can also try and close that gap above us on Portugal as well. But I think that will do things seeing up the new European season, as I mentioned earlier. No game today, but there weren't too many interesting options around the time that this group stage draw did take place. We'll come back at the start of next week with us not having a Molka Bikram final to look forward to, as well as the fact I'm probably going to miss two days of uploads again next week with a few house things, of course, with us moving into that next Friday. So there's definitely going to be two days next week. I will not be doing videos. There should be a video coming out on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday New Zealand times, which is Monday. Wednesday and Thursday UK time so keep that in mind for next week and with that in mind as well we'll do things so that there are two Champions League group stage games in each of those episodes we'll come back at the start of next week and we'll be taking on Cologne at home and Arsenal away to big big games to start off the group stages of the 2037 38 Champions League, but if you did enjoy today's episode, as I said earlier, setting things up for this new European season, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel. Also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well and we'll come back at the start of next week and get stuck into the 2037-38 Champions League group stage. Until then, thank you very much for watching, keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.